By this point, you viewed the course lecture videos on both the course project and on the week three, which was entitled Assessing Physical Security. Now to supplement this, the video lecture on that course project, I've worked with the instructional designers here in the College of Justice and Safety to develop an augmented reality model. Now, augmented reality was designed to produce and provide a view of a physical real world type environment whose elements are augmented by computer generated sensory input. And to boil that down, the purpose of this model is to give you, the student, a better idea of what to look for when you're conducting a security site survey. For purposes of today's demonstration, this model is going to be the first floor in the grounds of a small community hospital. Remember, this is just an example. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to assessments at a critical infrastructure site. We're going to provide several points of consideration to contemplate when conducting your own assessment. Let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> now, as we've discussed in this course, there's 18 critical infrastructure sectors in the United States. One of those sectors is the healthcare and public health sector. This sector is going to account for approximately 15% of the gross national product, and more importantly, it plays a significant role in response and recovery across all the other sectors. The goal of this sector is to mount a timely and effective response to both routine and emergency situations as it strives to protect the critical workforce in this country from harm. Before even arriving on site at the hospital depicted in this model, remember that I'm going to conduct some background investigation uh, with the hospital personnel, local law enforcement, and other data acquisition methods to determine the crime rate in the area, if there's any problems in the area with uh, issues such as vandalism or, or anything in that manner. Lastly, I'm going to request from the hospital any standard operating procedures, especially if those items deal with safety and security related items. Now that we've conducted some of our background research, let's take a look in front of me here and we're going to the facility and this is our augmented reality model. Okay, let's start by looking at the outward perimeter. As you're going to see all around the facility on three of the sides, we're going to have a fence line of trees and shrubs. Basically this is setting the perimeter for our facility. This as we've talked about in previous chapters could be defined as crime prevention through environmental design. What we're looking at is a way to offset the hospital's property from other uh, properties that may flank on each side. So that's one of the parts. Uh, given that it's a hospital, um, most hospitals don't have a requirement for fencing or other types of, uh, of uh, hardware, so um, this is not necessarily a concern of ours for this facility. Next, we're working our way in. As you can tell, on two sides of this facility, you're going to have parking lots. Uh, these parking lots have cars parked in them. They could be either staff, uh, doctors of the facility, or they might be visitors to the facility. If you look closely, these parking lots also have uh, security lighting in, in them. So as we've talked about in the lighting chapter, one of the things we're going to look for with security lighting is uh, we're going to come back after dark and we're going to bring our security light meter with us and we're going to determine what the illuminance of that area is. We'll consult that in either lux or foot candles, whatever your preference may be, and determine if the lighting requirements for these parking lots are sufficient uh, for this area. So that's another thing we're going to look at here before we even get into the building. Now, one of the other things we'll look at, we'll go here to the front of the building and we'll see that th where the ambulance is parked there, we've got a public road that runs right in front of this building. Okay, It's going to be one that provides easy access to the, uh, the hospital there. So we want to take a look at how we're accessing this. The front of the building here has two entrances, as you can see right there. Those two, one of them is the main entrance to the hospital, and the one right in front of the, ho the ambulance there is the emergency room. Now, we've talked in this class about the easiest way to design security is at the blueprint phase, but the reality is going to be that we may not always have that opportunity. So what we want to do is do the best we can with what we have in front of us. 
One of the things that's missing here that we need to take a look at is we need to have some barriers. And this will keep a car or other vehicle from coming in those front doors, whether on purpose or accidentally or either way. So something like a bollard or some other type of barrier on those front doors. The best way if the hospital was uh, going to do a redesign at some point would be that they would reevaluate their entrance and maybe put the emergency room main doors on this side of the hospital, keeping it away from the main entrance of the hospital, okay? So then we'll come back around. We want to look at the perimeter of this building. Now we're getting into the actual facility itself. What you're going to see here is that outside view again. Um, again, two doors. Uh, the, the one with the emergency obviously is marked the emergency room department. Um, you're going to see the main set of doors. Now, it may be a little bit counterintuitive for uh, a security professional to take a look at the locks on a hospital because we assume that hospitals are open access and that they should be, uh, be able to be accessed at all times. However, keep in mind that after hours we may lock the main entrance door seen right there and we may divert folks to the emergency room doors. Also keep in mind if there's a security threat inside that hospital, anywhere inside of this hospital, we may have to go into a security lockdown whereby we'll lock all the doors of this hospital. So we want to take a look at the locks and make sure that they are uh, of secure, that they can secure this building appropriately. We also want to take a look at the doors. Remember, you can have a great effective lock, but if the doors are not effective, then, uh, then the locks are worth nothing, okay? So make sure that the, uh, the assembly hinges and, and pieces such as that are not exposed and that uh, they can secure the facility and the people and the assets within. All right, let's move our way through the front door. And what we're gonna see here is inside, right there when we come in, is gonna be the uh, welcome center, information center, waiting room area, okay? And what we want to look at this is this is where an individual is going to sit and they will uh, inform people where to go, what patient, what room the patient's in, and so forth and so on. There will be a group of seats, as you can see, around that for folks to wait for people to come out of surgery, for them to wait for visiting hours and uh, other activities inside the hospital. You'll see a vending area uh, right there next to the, uh, the welcome center. This area can be used for uh, different concessions and uh, for hotel patrons to use while they're there. Now with the vending area, we won't have active people in there selling goods, but we will have machines. So if necessary, maybe a small surveillance camera can be installed to make sure the machines are not vandalized uh, after hours uh, or anything doesn't happen, happen like that to that, that area. On the other side, of that uh, concessions area, you're going to find a small gift shop. Very customary to a hospital. A gift shop provides things like flowers and balloons and other small gifts to take up to the patients to, to brighten their day. Um, obviously we'll have a staff person working in that gift shop and we're going to, uh, to have a cash management uh, piece to that. We want to make sure that that's secure in some type of lockable register and make sure that policies and procedures have been put into place um, so that, that cash can be transferred to a safe at the end of the night. It also probably be a good idea to put some type of surveillance in there, at least to, to try to uh, defend against shoplifting or other types of uh, crimes that may occur. All right, we're going to move over here to this side of the building. Right here in this corner, you're going to see a desk, and that desk is the business center of the hospital. This is where you'll come to pay your bills, this is where uh, they'll assess uh, where you need to go in terms of outpatient surgeries. This is where the control of all financial matters will happen within the hospital. Without an effective billing and collections piece of the hospital, the hospital cannot operate appropriately, so it's a very necessary piece. There are data security issues here. We have uh, laws with the HIPAA laws and different health care privacy acts now that we have to be considerate of when dealing with uh, patient information. So we have to make sure that that computer has a security uh, lockdown procedures on it that has the effective software so that that information cannot be accessed. We're gonna move in now closer and look at the security office uh, right there on the other side of that. You'll see a whole host of monitors inside of there. This is where a security guard could sit. 
This is where all the cameras inside the hospital are monitored or at least recorded. Uh, quite likely, um, the security force in this, this small hospital will be somewhat limited. Uh, the security guard will probably not man uh, this post at all times. So we want to make sure that there is adequate uh, recording capabilities at this time. The two offices on each side of that security office are both business offices. Uh, this could be uh, filing, this could be storage of records, this could be different parts and pieces of running the business of a hospital. Uh, office security templates should be used here, the security checklist that we've talked about. Uh, we do this, the same with computer security um, to ensure that those are effective. Now, moving to the very middle, you'll see that yellowish box right there as we go. That signifies our elevator shaft. There are several ways to lock down an elevator shaft. Um, in terms of looking at it like this, you're going to be able to see uh, that there's two different elevator shafts. Um, this comes into play a lot when we deal with floors such as labor and delivery or other floors where assets, uh, we want to make sure that assets aren't taken away. Uh, for example, in the labor delivery floor, we want to uh, install some RFID technology, radio frequency identification, attach that to the hospital armbands to make sure that those newborn babies don't walk off without their parents in tow. Okay, now we're going to turn now to this back corner of the hospital, right back in here, and we're going to see a suite of different patient rooms. Now these rooms may be used for uh, outpatient surgery type rooms, they could be used for different procedures. Uh, they could even be used for patient rooms. What you're going to see is a door right there that comes in and makes sure that no one gets access to that area. It's not a public access area. So on that door, we'd be anticipating some type of access control system, whether that be a biometric or some type of card reader system of some type to make sure that folks don't get into that area if they don't belong. You're going to see a nurse's station or a check-in desk there, as, uh, right there when you get inside that door. Um, that will keep some folks from uh, accessing that area, but you can't rely on a human manning a post at all times. You want to make sure that the effective access control systems are in place. Now, one of these rooms, as you rotate around, you're going to see a whole host of, uh, of different pharmacy-type cabinets in there if you look at the very top of the screen there. And what the purpose of this room is will be some type of drug or pharmaceutical storage area. This obviously is a, uh, is a security risk to this hospital. Uh, the uh, obtainment of drugs either uh, in a legal format or, or legally and then selling them to others is a huge problem in the United States. We want to try to counteract that with the appropriate controls on that room. Obviously, surveillance cameras would be a good idea for that room. We'd also want to make sure the appropriate access controls are also um, inside that room. We also want to make sure as we go around the side, we can see there's no windows on this side. That's a good idea from a security concern so that that's one less security feature that we're going to have to install. We won't have to worry about window breaks or any volumetric type devices on those windows. We can just go ahead and concentrate on the, uh, the interior door and have folks where they're accessing that. All right, the remainder of this time I want to spend on this other part of the hospital here in the back corner. What you're going to see is this is our emergency room. So I'm going to turn us around and I'm going to have us come in those front doors right here into the emergency department. What you're going to see when you come in right here in the corner is a kind of a welcome type desk. This would be where a receptionist or some type of entry would check you into the emergency room. Some waiting areas as if you visited a waiting room in any hospital you'll know that there is going to be some waiting involved. So we'll have uh, some of that. Um, what you're going to see right across from it right up here is a triage area, a couple of different triage rooms. As you know in an emergency room department the ideal is you come in, you're checked in, and then a nurse or nurse practitioner of some type triages your situation to determine uh, the, the severity of your need, whether they need to take you back right then or whether you can wait and let more severe patients take, take uh, precedence over you. You're going to see a couple other treatment rooms. These could be suture rooms 
or other types of specialty uh, rooms, maybe with uh, different types of equipment with EKG machines or other types of equipment. So the entire piece, we've got access controls placed on these rooms uh, in a secure area to make sure the patient records are kept intact and that, uh, that uh, the different equipment is also kept intact. I'm going to take you to the back of the hospital now, this back corner. We've got a suite of four different uh, patient uh, actual uh, working rooms where they can receive emergency treatment. This can range in severity from a community hospital where they're just trying to stabilize individuals um, to get them ready for processing to a larger hospital. Or this could be a simple uh, stitch or two or some different type of uh, procedure that they're going to take care of. Uh, we want to try to uh, maintain as much privacy in these rooms as possible while making sure that the uh, safety and security of our hospital staff and visitors is maintained. Basically, we have a holistic approach here on this first floor of this hospital. As we come to a conclusion here, you might be thinking to yourself, now this doesn't look like the hospital that I go to. I want you to remember, as I stated at the beginning, there's no one size fits all. Every facility, every building is going to be a little bit different. When we get into assessing critical infrastructure and assessing security, there's no one size fits all approach to that. There are more questions we could have asked. There's other areas we could have looked at. The purpose of this augmented reality model is to give you ideas, to give you a cross-section of a critical infrastructure to make you think about the ways you might approach a security survey. I hope you found this model informative and I wish you the best of luck as you conduct your physical security survey.